So, as you can see here, we have a box. In this box is a brand spanking new MST-203 from SurplusCenter.com. This is my shattered out MST-206, which you guys have all seen and made mud mower. Um, if you'd like to know more about the carnage that happened with this 206, you're more than welcome to check out the video. I'll include it in the description. But basically, when I blew this, I blew out the entire top of the case, and I blew out the entire bottom of the case. As you can see here, you can see the bull gear inside. Now I started doing a bunch of research, and if you start looking around, there's all kinds of places that sell the case parts. But they want like $250, $300, they want a used one on eBay for $250. Well, on SurplusCenter.com, I found an MST-203, and it is $119, with shipping to my house was $26, so grand total for the entire brand spanking new transmission was $146.45. The trick, though, is it is a 3-speed, so we have good internals in the 6-speed. We're going to see if they'll swap in today. Thanks guys for supporting me. Enjoy the show. So first things first, I wanted to show you the quality of the shipping. They sent it in this really nice big box. And it seems to have this really strange corrugated type of filler. So we'll throw that aside. And throw some more aside. Throw some more aside. Oh, here we go. And there we are. Ignore that, that's from the old one. There we are. Brand spanking new. So we're going to get this cut out. And we're going to get it sitting on the bench. And let's see what they look like from the outside. And hopefully they match. Hi, so pretty much if you look between the two, they're pretty much about the same. Brakes are in the same location. This has a different type of brake, so we'll need to swap over the one that I use on the Craftsman. Um, input shafts. The key is missing on the new one, so you'll need to make sure to swap that over. As far as detent ball and your shifter, they both look about the same, although the one notable thing that this, I'm wondering if it's a revision, because these bolts are on top, and if, you ever, if you've ever seen any of my other videos, I end up pointing out the fact that these are usually underneath most MSTs. So, I don't know whether that's an MST-203 thing, or whether that's a revision and this is a newer model. So... At this point, this one is obviously already shattered and opened up. So I'm going to get the bolts out of this one. I'm going to get the seal broken out, which you can see me do in other transmission videos. And we're going to pop it open, see what's inside here. Alright, so we've almost got this done. And... I wanted to do this on camera, which I know is boring, but I get asked all the time what it is MSTs are actually filled with. So I figure since this is a perfectly brand spanking new factory one, and there's no argument about whether anybody has monkeyed with it or not, that we should take a look and find out exactly what's in this. There it goes. So there we are. So, there's the answer. Because I'm sick of listening to people argue about it, as you can see, it's obviously got oil of some sort in it. But it seems to be a grease type consistency. So I'm pretty sure that some thick Lucas type grease would be fine. I tend to run 70-90 in mine with about a third or so of a quart of automatic transmission fluid. But then again, I over-rev and overdo mine, so there we go. 
if we pull this off apparently it's going to be a twit and we flip it over we can see that they basically look exactly the same so let's set these aside because this really isn't a big deal this is the big deal is will these internals swap for these internals over here. So, without any further ado, let's see what happens. We'll take these, which you can see the three, and there's obviously spacers that have been inserted, so I'm betting that we could just slide this off and throw this set on. This definitely looks like it matches to this gear here, this gear here looks about this one, and I would say this gear here is probably this one. So I'm betting these three here are probably the same swap over because it looks about the same amount. And of course reverse is just reverse. So we're going to see if we can pull these out, which they should just lift right out. And set those aside. One thing I would like to point out is if you look, you can actually see that it's actually kind of squarish. And that's important when you go to put it back together. And now we're going to take our shifting assembly along with brake. And we're going to lift that out. Now one thing to note here is we are going to pull the brake off and set it aside. There's no sense using really old brakes. Now if you look here, you'll see your actual shifting spring and your shifting ball. So set those aside. You're going to need those when you put it back together later. So. Now let's take these and get these swapped over. There's our first set. And as I said before, make sure that you set your flat areas down in. And now we've got our next set. And we're going to swap the brakes. And the brakes set in like this. So the brake caliper goes on like that. Now, one thing I forgot to note was that the brake caliper is going to bottom out when you pull it off. So you're going to have to undo these two caliper bolts and take this assembly off. So we're going to take this and we're going to pick it up and set it over into the other unit. Now, you're going to have to get the gears to mesh up, so it takes a little bit of back and forth, back and forth. But see, these match up easy. It's this side that's the pain. In fact, it'll go on easier if you just take the brake caliper entirely off. The brake rotor, when it goes back on, you have a pad that sits in the recess and then the rotor goes on to the spline section like so. Now we can put our caliper back on, but we're going to swap on the one from the other machine onto here, swapping this piece. Alright, so we've got our rebuilt caliper with the particular push section that the Craftsman uses. We're going to take our metal piece, make sure your push rods are nice and free and clear, all greased up. Set the metal piece on the inside, and then set our brake pad on the inside. And then we're going to put it back on the side of the transmission. Now I know that I'm about to get thoroughly yelled at for using an electric impact. But if you only go till the first click, 
or two. It's really not that big of a deal. So there we are, there's brakes. There's no brakes. Brakes, no brakes. So we've got our shifter installed, we've got our gears swapped over, we made sure our sections are flat, made sure our sections are flat, and we made sure that our key on this side is in place. Just so you understand what I mean by the key. The key would be this right here. As you can see, one goes this direction, and the other one goes the other direction, opposite. So the inner one goes that way, the outer one goes this way. So at this point, we should be able to throw the top of the case on. What I'm going to do just to prove the fact of whether this does or does not work is I'm going to clamp the case onto there so it's solid enough. We're going to power it up and we're going to see if our axles turn. Well, the case dropped on nice and easily. Uh, one thing to note, this right here is where your ball and your spring go when you're putting this together. You take that cap off and you drop your ball in, then you drop your spring, put the cap on. But for the sake of the fact we're just seeing if this thing will actually go, I'm just going to let it free shift. I don't recommend doing that on the tractor when it's live. Alright, so at this point we popped on a pulley just so that we can be able to spin it. We've got our clamps on in order to make sure that the case isn't going to move. The reason why this is clamped is because I'm actually going to be locking this for off-road use. And so I'm going to pull this back off, but I wanted to demonstrate the fact that you could swap all the internals. So, right now we should be in neutral. And if I spin this, this axle stays exactly where it is. Now if I take it, this is a 10 millimeter. I can shift it one over, and this would be reverse. And you can actually see the axle moving, because the keyway is turning. If I go the other way, the keyway will turn back. And if I shift two more to the other direction, we should be in first gear now. And it should spin forward. So there, first gear all the way around. So, at this point, we know the fact that the internals will swap. We know that the shifter will actually work. You can hear it. So, at this point, I've got to pull the top of the case back off, and I've got to decide which kind of locker I'm going to use on this particular unit. I can't decide whether I want to do the zinc locker, or whether I should do my old-fashioned locker block that I came up with last year. Thanks, guys, for watching my video. This is Redneck Computer Geek, as always, trying new things so that you don't have to.